After the announcement in May that European Challenge League would be comprised of teams that won their respective national leagues, we've had to wait months for all of them to conclude before we knew all the participating teams. After that, we had the close qualifier that determines the final spot, and with 12 teams now all locked and loaded, we can finally preview what it looks like. Mostly. This season incorporates auto relegation for the first time in a little while for the winner of Challenger League. They will automatically replace the last place team in the EU well overall, and the ninth place team will have to face the runner up from Challenger League in a relegation game to determine who gets that last spot heading into next year. Add to that a prize pool of something. Surely there's some money on the line here. I couldn't find anything about it. And I also don't know how many of their teams will retain their spots heading into the next European CL season because I'm pretty sure the idea of having national leagues act as qualifiers probably wasn't just a one-year thing. That seems like something Yubi would want to continue for future years, but... We'll just have to wait and find out. The format is a 12-team double GSL-style split that sees two groups of six fighting it out to be the top four from each group. From there, it's a single elimination bracket to determine the winners from both groups. Then both group winners play one another for the right to bounce one EUL team straight out of the league right off the rip. It's a pretty sweet gig if you can nail it. But let's go over a few things first. The current understanding is that organizations with teams in CL are able to drop their rosters if they want, and they would still retain their spot. In essence, the players who've qualified aren't the ones that retain the spot if the orgs decide to move on without them. But I think in all cases where that's happened in EU CL, the players have been able to keep the spots and the orgs have just dropped their support. So let's do this preview about as accurately as Liquipedia would have us believe. That's not even totally accurate. I don't know why I want to use them as a benchmark. <laughs> we have two legacy spots that are open to the teams that placed third and fourth in EU Challenge League for Season 11, and that's Lowland Lions and Penta. We have the nine top-placing teams in the National Leagues in Be Kind, Eminem Gaming, Windstrike Gaming, Granite Gaming, Team Heretics, Mako Esports, the Izako Boars, and then the X Division and Sector 1 rosters. And we have the winner of the Close Qualifier in Kavana Gaming. This is the full lineup, but... Let's talk about how we got here, because how teams are in this position is just as important to understanding where they might stack up with one another. Lowland Lions and Penta placed third and fourth respectively in the last season of EUCL when we were still under ESL. The top two teams from that league are the current Team Secret and Tempra, and back then Lowland Lions were known as Diffuse Kids. They have been auto-invited to this first season under Face It because of those previous placements. Penta hasn't made a change to their roster since that season, but Lowland has lost both next one one and cry into chaos in that time frame and they've since picked up panics from navi and astro from division not astro from phase that would be really awkward given the shirt that i'm wearing no idea how this new look team will do because they've not played matches publicly with this lineup they will also apparently be announcing a new org after the first play day does anyone know what the mouse emoji refers to did Deadmau5 create an org? That'd actually be sick. Penta, I think, are odds-on favorites to win this league this time around. But Lowland are impossible to call since it's only three-fifths of the team that we've known them as. Depending on what their full squad looks like together in matches, they could theoretically play us anywhere. I have no idea. But Penta, for me... My favorite to win the whole thing. The winner of the United Kingdom Ireland Nationals is Eminem Gaming, who defeated Na'Vi twice in the playoffs, especially in that grand final, to qualify for CL. Their roster is three-fifths of Crazy's old team, but also includes Fonkers, one of the old Team Secret Corps members, looking to make his way back into T1. Eminem has also had more original five-man rosters than any other org in the scene, I think, other than maybe Elevate? They just breed good rosters, apparently, and they defeated Na'Vi every time they played during that UKIN season. Even though it was with a sub, they still looked really good. The top blazing team in the Russian Major League is Windstrike, a team that used to fly under Four's flags after Four's first team was signed to Virtus Pro. This squad is two players different from the one that played in the RML, but two of their former players, Always and Milan, now play for the Russian teams in the European League. I don't know if you could say this is technically the third best team in Russia, given all the changes that they've had to make, but their old team did get third in the RML behind both Empire and VP, so by that technicality, I guess they are. At the very least, they've created a good enough team environment to foster two current EUL players. There's clearly something to them, but roster changes make them a question mark to me. The French League qualifier is Be Kind, but this is interesting because of how that league is set up. It has BDS, Penta, Vitality, and Tempra all in it, and Be Kind placed fifth. 
with two wins. One was against Vitality, which doesn't count because Vitality was whack, and the other one was a forfeit, which also doesn't count. From the outset, I don't have much confidence that this team can hang with the rest of CL, though they've mostly been losing their matches in the French League to just the EUL teams that are with them, and they haven't made any roster changes since they made Challenge League to begin with. For that reason, team cohesion is probably high, and they've also said that they're looking for different org options, so they may stop competing under the Be Kind banner at some point in the future just like the Lowland Lions. What does the mouse emoji mean? The Nordic Championship finalist is Granite Gaming, though it only has two actual Nordic players on it, two Brits and a Dutchman. I don't have a thing against the Dutch, I just like saying Dutchman like it's a curse word. What the Dutch? These guys were second in the Nordic group stage behind Chaos, but because Chaos won their semi-final game in the playoffs, all Granite had to do was beat Sisu in their semi-final to qualify and didn't even have to worry about the grand final result. It sparked some debate about EUL teams being able to play in these national leagues because sometimes it can stop other teams from having a good chance if they just keep playing EUL teams and lose. It's a discussion for another video, but I see their point. Granite still gave Chaos a pretty good fight in that final, and since that match, haven't made any roster changes. So, keep your eyes on how they'll do. I've got a sneaking suspicion they might be a sleeper. Might. The Spain national champion is Team Heretics. The Spanish scene in general is actually a super competitive one, to the point that I think a lot of people are sleeping on it. Remember back when Empire just kind of came out of nowhere and we were like, oh hey, here's what the Russian scene looks like? Spain might do something pretty similar. When the World Cup roster comes calling, I think we'll see a few of these guys on it. They're currently a man down after Polo left a few weeks back, and his former NIP stand-in partner, Baraz, is still on the team, so there's at least one recognizable face to those of you who watched the Tokoname finals. But it's the same case with every team after a roster move. We don't know how well they'll do with their new player until we see them in action. Though, this is probably Spain's best chance to make an international mark, because this is going to be on the worldwide stage. Let's see how they can do. The Italian team, the winner of the PG Nationals, is Mako Esports, who were known as the Samsung Morning Stars when they played through that league. Then Temper came knocking, who were owned by the same parent company, and the Morning Stars couldn't have a team anymore, so then Mako showed up and put their whole team in a badass house that looks like it's funded by the mob. They are Italian, so that would make sense. This is where Sir Boss went after his time with Penta and being a G2 stand-in for the Invitational. They've also made one roster change recently, so I can't really speak to how well they'll perform, but because of the org support that they seem to be getting, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't low-key rooting for them. Dude, I want to live there. The Polish Masters champions are the Izako Boars. Don't worry, I don't know that much about them either. The whole Polish master circuit at large is one the world just hasn't taken a good solid look at, but just analyzing what the Boars did to make it to CL is a pretty good story setter by itself. They were second during the Polish regular season, lost their first game of the finals, then completed the lower bracket miracle run to win the whole thing. So if nothing else, they are some resilient sons of guns. Plus, it's the same team with no changes, and they also appear to have pretty good org support, so I wouldn't write them off yet, even if I'm going into this season rooting for them as the inevitable underdogs. We'll see how good Poland actually is at Siege. It gave us saves, so it can't be too bad, right? Alright, I was saving these last two on the National League list because this is where we enter some sketchier territory. The winners of the GSA and Benelux Leagues, Division and Sector 1 respectively, are both instances where orgs have since dropped their players, but as of the time of writing, it seems like both teams will keep their spots even though they don't represent those orgs anymore. Sector's one team has officially gone orgless, but only three-fifths of the qualifying roster is still with the team, and they've brought in two Brits to fill out their remaining spots. Immediate question mark for me. Division, as of yesterday, also split from their team and are now under a Team Fedora name. Really? We have Joe Esports and the Favelas in North America, but Europe just had to team Fedora harass his. How can anyone take us seriously with names like that? I don't know what their teams look like or how prepared they are, but for squads that were putting EUL teams on blast in GSA, I don't think they'll be anywhere close to the powerhouse that they once were. The last team to make it in yesterday from the closed qualifier is Kavana Gaming, who had to slug through open quals and the closed bracket, beating teams like Salamander, Movistar Riders, and Makers to make it to CL. This is a team that's kept the same lineup through the UK Ireland Nationals and made the playoffs where they ultimately got third under Na'Vi. I guess I inherently follow the UK scene a little more than most other nationals in Europe, so it's a name I'm more familiar with, but whether they can stack up an EU CL will be revealed 
as time goes on. So that is all 12 squads. There's a lot of precedent that's going to be set over the next couple of weeks because we haven't used national leagues as qualification processes before. Some teams might excel where we don't expect, some teams might suck hard. Some might not even be their region's best team, depending on how their National League circuit went. This is going to give a lot of underexposed regions way more notice by giving them an international platform on a major Rainbow Six broadcast. They haven't announced the talent for it yet, though... When they do, you're going to be scratching your head just as much as I was scratching mine. It's an odd choice, I get it, but also don't get it at the same time. You'll just have to wait and see. Regardless, I hope this was a good primer for European Challenge League Season 1. Technically, the action all begins on Friday, September the 25th, so keep your eyes glued to the official R6EU account for more details before it begins tomorrow. And hopefully, pretty soon, we can also talk more about North American Challenge League, as that is supposed to kick off shortly as well. So hit up my Twitter, my Twitch, and this YouTube channel for all of that information, and I will see you later.